Well, Alex, thank you very much for that. I'm well aware of my position as tail end Charlie here today, uh, pulling up the rear and making sure that we don't get too much uh, over our time limit. But uh, thank you very much for inviting me here today. Um, basically, I've got very, very little time to talk to you something which we could talk about all day. Um, but I'm going to give you a heads up on a few bits and pieces uh, on demand control ventilation uh, through theory and practice. Uh, I want to cover four main points today. I just want to go through what is DCV, uh, why should we be considering DCV. I want to give you an example. I also want to look at the future and maybe uh, share a few points on the wish list. So with, uh, with no further ado, uh, let's just make sure that we're all on the same uh, page when it comes to abbreviations and what we're talking about. Um, most of you, I assume, understand uh, and have uh, seen before uh, constant air volume systems. Um, with those, the air volume is the same basically all day. Um, obviously, it makes sense if you want to go to a variable air volume where you may have uh, some sort of time function, for example, in offices if you're not there uh, during the evenings, of course, why, why are you ventilating? Uh, or you may have some sort of predefined set point uh, through some sort of variable that you want to uh, want to consider. But I would argue that they're not really demand controlled ventilation systems. Uh, demand controlled ventilation really has to be seen as the, the automatic regulation of airflow from sensors which are in the occupied space. Um, this means you need to have uh, room sensors which give uh, a measurement of the IAQ in the room or the, uh, the temperature, and then this needs to be controlled, used to control the airflow uh, according to the uh, desired IAQ. Uh, that means that you do need to specify in a, a qualitative way the objectives uh, which the DCB system is hoping to fulfill. But let's have a look at um, why I think we need to consider smart control ventilation systems. Well, as uh, most of you probably agree with me, the majority of our buildings in Europe uh, already exist, and that's probably uh, true for quite a lot of countries outside of Europe as well. Um, a lot of these are going to be coming up to renovation uh, or are going to need renovation in regular intervals, and they may not be suitable for large, lower pressure ducting systems, uh, which you may see as an alternative in some new builds. Uh, so we need to use technology to, be, to solve these existing problems with IAQ issues. So basically, we, we want to use as little energy as possible. Yes, that's what we want, and we don't want to compromise on IAQ. Just to give you an example uh, from where I live today in Sweden, uh, let's just look at schools, because I know that that's one of Axel's favorite uh, areas. And uh, as you heard earlier today, they have uh, some problems in Holland, and we have our share of problems in Sweden as well, where 40% of school buildings do not pass the obligatory or the compulsory ventilation inspection. Uh, this comes from our uh, Department of Energy and Board of Housing Review. Uh, there's also a real problem with uh, allergies in schools, and that's basically due to ineffective ventilation and poor cleaning. And that's also been well documented in the press here. One way of solving this could be uh, through renovation with DCV systems. Uh, so you will still get the IAQ desired and also make sure we're not using more energy than is absolutely necessary. So let's have a look at what DCV actually means uh, in terms of uh, what we're actually supplying. And I want to do a comparison between DCV system and the CAV system. The graph on the left there shows you the, uh, the time of day on the 24 hour clock uh, compared to the, uh, the heat generated or heat losses in watts per meter squared. And uh, if you were to have a, uh, a CAV system, you would have to cause a certain rate in order to, uh, to fulfill the, uh, the colonies during the, uh, the warm part of the day and also cause heat during the, uh, the, uh, the times when the, uh, you have a, a deficit. Uh, but that way you can actually, uh, with, with DCV, you can actually um, make sure you're getting just enough heat uh, for what you need, uh, and you're able to heat and cool uh, to demand. And then you can also see on the graph on the right there that you actually are able to uh, adjust the hygienic flow rate as to uh, what the 
the mortgage through the period of the day. So you can see lows during the evenings, uh, lows during lunch times, uh, and you can see where the peaks are, and you can now mention accordingly. Uh, looking at some field measurement data here, uh, what you see there on the left are, uh, is a building which was measured for the, uh, for the whole year. Uh, of course, it wasn't occupied all the time. And you could see how the, uh, the uh, electrical power and the airflow rates, uh, how much of the time you actually had uh, the higher airflow and higher electrical power consumption and how that tailed off. Uh, they were actual measured uh, values from the building. Uh, compared to a, a DCB system where you would have to uh, make sure that you covered the, the peak, peak demands all the time. And of course, maybe you would switch it off during the evening anyway. But, um, but even so, there are uh, a significant energy to be saved. So if we look at the, uh, the characteristics of uh, specific fan power against uh, airflow, uh, you can say that the red line at the top here uh, would characterize a, uh, a constant air volume system. And you could say as we go through the yellow, green, and then through towards the blue line, that you actually see the different uh, degrees of how you're controlling the system, uh, the optimal being towards the, uh, the lower uh, blue line. That's where you have the most uh, ability to, uh, to, to save energy uh, and make sure you're still getting the maximum benefit. Uh, I don't want to go through this in great detail, uh, but I just wanted to put it in the presentation so you, you could look at this later. And I think it's very interesting because, uh, as I said, you need to have some sort of sense in the occupied zone. And uh, this is a, a list of sensor types and the benefits and drawbacks of each one uh, through clocks and ultra-frequency sensors, CO2 concentration, VSD, uh, and temperature, of course. Uh, but I'll leave that there just for your, uh, you to look over afterwards. I think it's also very interesting to say that there are uh, um, at least three different types, what I would say, of DCB system. Um, and again, you know, you want to pick the one that, that fits the building that you want to consider. Uh, to look at constant pressure control, and that's where you have uh, the fan uh, is, is driven or controlled through a pressure sensor, which is in the main ventilation duct at a suitable distance away. Uh, then you have pressure optimized demand control ventilation. Uh, where you're looking at having a uh, pressure set point uh, which is regulated by the controller uh, so that at least one of the damps is fully open. Uh, and then the optimal really today is where you're looking at damp crops by DCB. So you're always trying to make sure that, uh, that at least one of the damps is fully open or one of the own damp is depending on the complexity of the system. But I think that's the important thing to consider which uh, how you characterize your DCB system, which one you want to go for. If we look at a case study now, uh, I want to look at this, uh, this building, which is in Gothenburg in Sweden. Uh, it might say it's an extreme case. Uh, the reason for that really is because uh, the, uh, it, it, the head office or a, uh, a team of uh, consultants uh, who look at uh, uh, building design and building systems. Uh, so because it was their, uh, because it was their head office, they, uh, they were very keen to make sure they had the, uh, the lowest possible uh, energy usage and the best possible IHU for their workers, and to also use it as a, uh, uh, as the, to highlight their skills and expertise. But what was interesting in this building from the beginning is that they, uh, they realized quite early on that, yes, they wanted very, very low uh, air velocity from the duct system. Yes, they wanted to have, uh, because they want to have very low pressure drops, but at the same time they realise they're going to get a lot of thermal losses because the air was lowing, uh, moving so so, uh, so slowly. So this was definitely a trade-off between pressure drop and thermal loss. Uh, the lower the airspeed, more thermal loss, so they'd have to lag, or was it, wor was it worth just moving things a little bit faster? So they actually went for a, a compromise in the end. They couldn't go as low as they wanted, but they knew they couldn't uh, insulate too much within the building either. Uh, so this was just one thing I wanted to highlight with this though, because during the construction, uh, they actually missed uh, to uh, one of the, the technical rooms. And uh, so they, they put in a uh, 15 meter long duct to, to put some CAV volume into that space. And it took the whole, uh, 
whole room out of, out of balance or the whole system out of balance. Uh, they didn't really consider or understand the uh, the impact of putting in the CAD system on the uh, the rest of the system. Uh, so they had to remodel it. Uh, they changed it from 125 millimeters up to 200, which enabled to lower the pressure drop, and everything then was uh, in perfect balance at 35 pascal again. So it's not this impossible. It just needs to be considered and thought through about how the airflow and how pressure works together. One thing which unfortunately maybe seems a bit boring but needs to be considered is that uh, whenever you do any sort of system, but particularly with the, uh, the DCB systems, that, you, that everything is documented properly. Uh, the levels of airflow uh, at unoccupied minimum, maximum, uh, where you're putting the pressure sensors, uh, what sort of flexibility in the room do you want in the future or rooms that have been added. Uh, we need to look at making sure that each component is marked up. Uh, and what the functionality of the components are. Uh, very easy to get missed. But some tips on DCB systems. So I would say that if possible, always start planning for DCB systems from, DCB systems from the first step. Don't try and take another system and convert it into one. You need to really start with a clean sheet of paper. You need, to, you need to try and understand which rooms need to have balanced supply and extract. In other words, you're putting a supply into that room and extracting into that and extracting from that room. And in which area we need transfer wheels, maybe into a corridor or something. Uh, which room should have uh, CAV uh, as opposed to DCV and how will that affect how the system remains in balance? Certainly a question you need to be asking yourself. And uh, how are you going to look at the main ducts and shafts? And uh, what are the size of them? How much space have you got? and uh, of course the effect on the dimension on the central air handling system. If I had a wish list for the future then I would certainly want to look at the future for more smart functions and job optimization for both temperature and pressure. Uh, basically what I'm getting is that I, I want to have simplicity uh, not only from a user but also from a design perspective. Um, I would like to maybe see some sort of uh, integration to weather control uh, and energy optimization for, for buildings from, from, from that perspective. Uh, and uh, I think I would also like to see uh, better CAD tools for designers because at the moment, as far as I'm concerned, I don't see anything which is a CAD software which can use to simulate and calculate DCB. If there's any designers out there that don't know better than please let me know because I certainly don't know of any. Um, I also wonder if it's possible to have some of IAQ indicator uh, sometimes you might say, well, you know, the IAQ really should always be correct, so why do you need to show an indication of it? Um, maybe you just need to have temperature. But, you know, maybe it would be good to have uh, have it backed up by the fact that you actually know that you, you're getting a good IAQ. But I think the focus uh, on all these points in some ways should be greater focus on, on uh, simplicity. Uh, as I say, all the way through from the designing, the contractor, uh, all the way through to the uh, to the user experience. Simplicity is certainly the key. So, concluding that, I would say that I would like to say um, design for DCB from the beginning, consider future changes in the building system, and you need to have a good practical understanding of airflow and pressure, and uh, what it needs to make the uh, to make changes to a DCB system. It's not rocket science, but you just need to understand how they work together. Last word, DCV is pretty easy, but uh, you need to make sure that you can uh, do this uh, and reduce the energy uh, without compromising IAQ. Uh, as a final word, I just want to say that on the last slide, I've got all the, uh, the uh, references. Uh, there today and uh, please do look up on the Sweet On Air Academy website. There's lots of good information there and uh, you'll have a lot more time than what I've had today to go through it hopefully. Thank you very much. I will hand back over to, uh, to Alex. Thank you for your time.